on there and it's free of charge if you're a Pioneer customer. If you're not a Pioneer customer, they'll probably give it to you too so that maybe you'll become a Pioneer customer. <laughs> Everybody's always wondering, how do you deal with 350 bushel residue? Well, for me, living in the south, it's no big deal. Microbes basically are going to work down to about 50 degrees. So what we do in the fall of the year, as soon as we harvest our corn, we come in there and we apply some form of sugar and some nitrogen. And all we're doing is spiking those microbes up. Microbes will work down to about 50 degrees. And become springtime, they're pretty, all of our stocks are pretty well dissipated. So, you know, that's one of those things you might try up here in Michigan. I don't know how great it's going to work because where we was at this morning, it was doing ice sculptures, and I can promise you, I don't know one place in southwest Missouri that's doing ice sculptures. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they, Jim says, hey, you know, Mark Cross Road, look at those uh, ice sculptures. I said, no, it's kind of cold out here. <laughs> it was in the 60s at home last week, but we actually got a little snow in it now, so... Uh, these are all some old open pollinated hybrid or varieties that was all developed back in the early 1700s. You know, I, I, I've always often wondered, how did they come up with these names? You know, Bloody Butcher, I understand it's red, green, yellow, and then I understand they come up with that name. But that one right there I struggle with because the only thing I can promise you in the 1700s or 1800s, there wasn't enough corn grown in those arts to raise any mortgages whatsoever. Or lift any or whatever. B-73s out of Iowa State, most 17s out of the University of Missouri. Those are both inbreds. Of course, you get the B by M. There's your hybrid. That's number one all-time hybrid ever planted in the United States. Every seed company sold that hybrid, with the exception of Pioneer. The point being is, is if you're planting a mom-and-pop shop hybrid out here, Make sure it's not a remake of somebody else's, and then there's not five seed companies selling that exact same hybrid under a, dig, under, a, under a different name. Just make sure you're actually planting true different genetics. These are some 93 and 61s. This is a pretty short variety for us. Uh, pretty early mature, 3.6. We grow more of a late four, mid fives. We've actually had some. Some eights, and we can mature eights. The problem is they get as tall as the ceiling, and they don't work too good. But uh, these soybeans right here has been planted six days. <laughs> <laughs> They've not been up six days. We planted them six days for a picture taken. Oh, wow. Who's thinking six weeks? Yeah, well, here's what we do. I am a firm believer in optimize. It's an inoculant made by EMD. Costs three bucks an acre. We're getting three bushels. It's a no-brainer. I mean, simple economics. No seed treatment with seed treatment. You're going to pull 95% of your nutrients out of the top four inch soil profile. So the more feeder roots you can put in that top four inches, the more that plant's got the ability to take up the nutrients. So if you got it, your dealer's got a seed treater and you're treating your seed with Cruiser or, or Trilex and you're not using Optimize, I like to refer to that, you obviously cannot stand prosperity. So, it's just a no-brainer. This is one of these things I would definitely try. Everybody says that you can't nodulate soybeans if you apply nitrogen. That's not true. In 08, I think it was, we had a little field day bad mistake, uh, required the hour of my day every day. We had over 2,000 farmers come to our farm here for a couple of days, and we had all kinds of neat experiments out there. And one of our experiments is, is, is uh, I already knew this, that soybeans are very inefficient nitrogen users. It takes six pounds of nitrogen to produce a bushel of soybeans, where corn takes 1.1 to 1. And we apply nitrogen to all of our soybeans. So we triple raised some optimize on these soybeans, and then we went and applied a thousand pounds of action nitrogen an acre, and that's out of that plot. So if you apply nitrogen, your soybeans will nodulate. These are 93 B73s. They've been planted 28 days. <laughs> We try to get this stuff out of the ground and grow it like a bad man. So, uh, all that's got to do with the seed treatments, 
We fertilize our soybeans. Basically what I'm saying is we don't treat like dirt and it's septile. So we try to get our beans up and growing fast and uh, that comes back and bites us a little later on. But uh, a few of our problems is our soybeans get way too tall. <laughs> These are 94 by 90s. They're not even blooming yet. The problem is for me is I've got to overcome two things to be able to achieve 200 bushel soybeans. One, we've got to be able to control light mold, and two, we've got to be able to control the height. So we're working very diligently on both of these. The white mold, I think we finally got answered. DuPont has got a brand new fungicide that we had last year that should be released in 2011. That's excellent control on white mold. So I think we got that one with. Now if we can just figure out this height issue because you don't want to have this happen with dinner node six to eight inches <coughs> apart. I got two microphones covered when I talk here. Uh, what happens is they get tall, rank, and lazy, and they go to grow them across the top of each other. So this is our biggest challenge. So we really work pretty hard on this height control issues. We tried a little bit of everything in our sun. We sprayed Banvil, uh, Sron, Apple G, Picks, 3X rates of Cobra. My favorite of all, the hedge trimmer. <laughs> Kids like it too. Yeah, kids <laughs> like the hedge trimmer too. What we did with the hedge trimmer is we went out here and we cut the top one or two nodes out, two additional nodes out, and then tried to kill the program. We didn't manage to kill anything. The only thing I can tell you out of all of our experiments on trying to control heights with chemical or the hedge trimmer, all we did was hurt our eel. So we're still working on that. We're gaining a little bit on it, but uh, we still have a ways to go on that. This is more what you want to see, basically a sea of beans. You know, those plants that's potted really nice. That's the white mold, everybody knows. I mean, there's no use beating the dead horse there. Uh, I'm just waiting for 2011. <coughs> we'll have the, that fungicide again next year. Where we had it this year, we had 100% white mold control. So it's still crop struck. This is what we really try to get. These are out of our 154 bushel beans, the two inch internodes, heavy pods. I always try to pick the right that has the ability to put a big cluster at the top. Uh, basically, you're pulling about 80% of your yield out of the top inches, eight inches of that soybean plant. So try to pick Bryce has the ability to put big clusters in the top because each trifolia feeds that set of pods. So the higher up in that plant, the more that plant's taken into photosynthesis. This is, if we could just do that, about 235,000 times. These are out of our 154s. We had to defoliate these soybeans. We defoliated these about seven days or so after this picture was taken. Uh, they were totally mature, 13 to 14% moisture, and still all the foliage is still on it. So, uh, most people want to know, well, how in the world do you combine them in big old stems and they're green? Well, a small stem to me is the size of your thumb. A big stem to me is the size of a half a dollar. All of our stems are all solid stems, so they're like buckbrush. They're hard. All we do is we just open that rotor wide open, slow it way, way down, and each one of those stalks is like a rasp bar, and they actually thrash out the soybeans. So it's not that difficult. No, I'm not going to go cut them at seven miles an hour, but we can cut them at four and a half miles an hour, and I'd rather cut four and a half miles making 100 bushels at seven versus seven miles an hour making 50. So it don't bother me to slow down that couple miles an hour to be able to cut a couple hundred bushel beans or 100 bushel beans. This is where we got the hedge trimmer idea. That's one plant. We use some scissors, and we've been playing with this. We got there at about the second tripod, and we're cutting that top out of the plant. And it's causing the fork. If we could just do that about 235,000 times, we could break the world record in corn using soybeans. 